Good day, everyone. So my name is JD and Happy New Year. So you're still at Field Study 1. So we are now going to discuss three topics for this week. So we'll be talking about utilizing teaching learning resources and ICT. For the episode 12, we'll be talking about assessment four and as learning, which focuses on formative assessments. And uh, episode 13, we'll be talking about assessments of learning, which talks about summative uh, assessments. So let's jump right into our discussion regarding the importance of technology in education. For the episode 11, we will not be talking about educational technology because, again, this is field study one. So it is encouraged that you've taken um, educational technology one and two because we will not be talking about technicalities instead we will be talking about the importance of um, educational technology and ict in teaching at the 21st century so utilizing teaching and learning resources and ict the unesco uh, actually uh, gave us a framework in 2018 called the competency framework for teachers which talks about the importance of ICT in teaching. Remember that in 21st century education, we are not only preparing our students to become employees, but we are preparing our students to become people who create their own works and not just to apply for a job. So number one is understanding ICT in education. It is very important that the information communication technology or ICT uh, learning is infused in our education system, not just as a tool, uh, as a tool for teaching and learning, but as a tool for transformation. ICT should also be included in the curriculum and assessments. It plays a vital role in planning. ICT should be included in the curriculum, in the instruction, as well as assessments. That is why in the 21st century education, especially now during the pandemic, we are using different assessment tools. We have different sites that are available for teachers and educators. Other institutions use learning management systems, different learning management systems such as MS Teams, Google Forms, and many more. So these are very relevant. This was actually encouraged by the UNESCO in 2018, but we are already practicing it in 2020 because of the pandemic. That is why a good curriculum, if you're going to remember, that a good curriculum is not just stagnant, it's not just constant, because a good curriculum is responsive to the needs of the society. There, in 2020, because of the pandemic, you can actually see the importance of the ICT in infusing it with education. Number three is pedagogy. In the 21st century education, technology has to be integrated to education. That's why we're also encouraging our teachers not just to use or utilize uh, board works, right, uh, a pen and paper assessments, uh, but we encourage our dear teachers to practice their teaching using um, technology. So there's actually a uh, there's actually what we call a technology and pedagogical uh, infusion of teaching. So technology and pedagogy is very important. But then again, uh, no technology could defeat the, the pedagogy of teachers. But as teachers, we are encouraged to use uh, the technology in our pedagogy because, again, the flow of education is transformative. It changes from time to time. What is needed now is different from what was needed before. And there is a big possibility that what is needed in the future might be different. That's why teachers, we are encouraged to continually practice our profession progressively. Okay. Number uh, four is application of digital skills. It is very challenging for teachers because digital skills is actually... Um, quite difficult, especially for those seasoned teachers. But for teachers that are starting their career in 21st century education, they have to and they must learn about digital skills, like editing, like simple use of MS, uh, Microsoft um, applications, Microsoft softwares, and of course, 
uh, digital skills like if, if for for mathematics teachers and for science teachers we are now encouraged to use online laboratory online laboratory platforms or online calculation platforms okay next is organization and administration remember that we do not we do not just pitch technology to our uh, to our students we do not just give technology to our students because we want to but we pitch this technology we use this technology for them to have an easier grasp of the knowledge that we are uh, that we want to transfer to them and then lastly is teacher professional learning of course as teachers again we are encouraged to grow no um progressively in terms of technology and in terms of teaching and learning and ICT is something that we cannot uh, deviate or we cannot leave in the 21st century education because it plays a vital role I encourage those who are watching this video to please visit the ICT CFT or the uh, UNESCO ICT competency framework for teachers version 3 in 2018 for you to have more glimpse on what is being asked for us teachers in teaching with ICT. So there are uh, there are levels of teaching ICT skills. Uh, this is similar to the PPST, the Philippine Professional Standard for Teachers. For the ICT, there are also uh, levels wherein teachers are are being assessed on on what level of teaching ICT are they. So level one is knowledge acquisition. This is when the teacher starts to acquire learning from using uh, uh, from using the technology. Example, in the 21st century education, using Zoom is in 2020 using Zoom platforms, Google Form, uh, Google Meets, and other uh, online platforms has been encouraged because it has to be used in conferencing and classroom setups. So knowledge acquisition, that's when the teacher starts to use them, starts to learn how to use them. And then level two is knowledge deepening. This is when they start to navigate. This is when the teacher starts to navigate the ICT platform. Okay. And then lastly, this is when teachers learn to create their own um uh, planning their own flow of learning when they use uh, when they use an online platform so i believe that in the year 2020 a lot of teachers were uh, rather forced to learn ict skills it was very challenging for every one of us i i, I know that i was also forced to study but uh, given the fact that i'm quite uh, new in the industry of the academe uh, I believe that those who are seasoned teachers had more difficulties that I, than I had. So kudos to all educators that uh, had to respond to the needs of the society. And of course, as future teachers, those who are listening in this video, please prepare yourselves to be not stagnated when you are already teaching. The demand of education is different than the demand in, 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 other, in other professions. Because the demand of educators has to be transformative. We must not lean on our existing knowledge. It has to be transformed. It has to be developed further. So I would like to share to you about the technology matrix. There's actually a technology matrix that provides a comprehensive framework that defines and evaluate the technology integration. As teachers, there is what we call technology integration progressing levels. There is for teachers to assess teachers and to assess the learners if the technology integration is actually effective. So entry, this are, these are the technology integration progressing levels. So number one is entry. The teacher begins to use technology tools to de deliver curriculum content to the students. In 2020, all education uh, systems all over the world had to transform or transfer their curriculum from face-to-face -to, -face to online platforms. And through using these online platforms, we are able to use ICT. Okay, this is the entry when teachers has to first, when teachers has, has to do the first step on, on teaching through ICT. 
And the next one is adoption. The teacher directs students in the conventional and procedural use of technology tools. This is when the teachers do not just use the technology, but of course, allows the learners to respond through technology. Okay, like a thumbs up, raise your hands. That's the time when the teachers allows an interaction via technology. And then adaptation. The teacher facilitates students' exploration and independent use of the, te of the technology tools. This is no longer an interaction between the teacher and the student using ICT, but an interaction between the teacher and the students and the students with other students. This is also uh, what we call an interaction between a teacher and other teachers in terms of using technology. So example, uh, conferencing uh, between teachers and students and conferencing between students and fellow students, like having group activities, having group forms. This is when the teacher starts to facilitate this group works. Okay? It's quite difficult to actually manage group activities that are online. Unlike if you're, you're in a in a face-to-face -face class and then there's a group activity or a brainstorming activity between your classes, you could, a teacher could actually easily roam around the class and ask and update about the group. But right now, it's really quite difficult. So you see, every level has certain levels of difficulties, like entry level. It's That's why it's stage one, because it's uh, the time when the teacher starts to use it solely for instructional purpose. And then when you go to the adoption, that's when this, the learners starts to respond through that technology. And then adaptation, this is when the teachers uh, had to use technology towards the learners and the learners with their fellow learners, okay? It's quite difficult. And then lastly is uh, the, sorry, this is the fourth stage, rather. The fourth stage is infusion. The teacher provides learning context and students choose the technology tools. Now, this is when teachers has to encourage their students to not just use one or two platforms of technology, but encourages their students to use different platforms. Now, the challenge here is that the teacher has to know what type of learning technology these students are using, okay? So um, teachers has to put context to the learners what they have to use. Example, there are platforms that can be used for calculations, platforms that can be used for group activities, platforms that can be used for oral activities. Because in the 21st century education, we must still promote differentiated activities. We cannot just use one platform in the entire period because this may uh, disregard the other types of learners we have. That's why using ICT in technology education, has you have to use different platforms, different settings also. Consider different settings, different platforms to consider the different learners. That's why the technology has to be infused in the education practice from uh, instructional to assessments and evaluation. Okay, so you're not just teaching through online, you're also assessing and evaluating through online. And then next is transformation. The teacher encourages the innovative use of technology tools to facilitate higher order learning activities that may not be possible without the use of technology. Now, there are activities that can be done without the use of technology, but through the level of transformation, teachers are encouraging their students to use activities that requires technology. Okay, so remember again, that what happened in 2020 in the pandemic, it's a call to the education system that it has to respond to the needs of the society. So whatever we are having right now, like using online platforms as teachers, um, would actually be something that allows us teachers to prepare ourselves for 
uh, transformation of the curriculum. There might be a possibility of considering, um, say, for example, a one-day online class after this uh, this scene. Now, that, that's just an assumption. But then again, this integration matrix can help us teachers to evaluate ourselves on our readiness on entering um, an online education. Now, this is for teachers. So take note of that. Entry, adoption, adaptation, infusion, and transformation. Now, for the learners, interdependent characteristics of the learning environment also is affected by this uh, ICT matrix. So for the learners, uh, active is that students are engaged in using technology as a tool rather than passively receiving information from the technology. So this is when the students no longer just receive information from online education, but no, uh, students can now actually respond to the teaching okay, from a via online education or distance education. And then collaborative students use technology tools to collaborate with others rather than working individually at all times. Remember that in 21st century education, we are no longer promoting competition, but collaborative learning. Collaborative learning allows the learners to practice their craft, to practice their uh, course with other classmates or with other students that are involved in that class. So using platforms, again, like group activities, sizzle sessions, brainstorming activities, using an online platform is very important. Next is constructive. Students uh, use technology tools to connect new information to their prior knowledge rather than to passively receive information. Students are not just receiving information. Instead, they are creating their own uh, links of knowledge. Remember that in 21st century education, we are not the sole source of knowledge. As teachers, we are merely but facilitators. But being facilitators is actually quite more difficult because of the pool of knowledge that we have. Okay? And this information has to be sorted properly when we present it to the students. Later, I will be discussing how you do that. Next is authentic. Students use technology tools to link learning activities to the world beyond the instructional setting rather than working on uh, the uh, contextualized uh, assignments. So it is very important that we contextualize our assessments, our activities, our instructions, even on face-to-face -face activities. But it's actually quite more difficult when we do it online because we actually do not know the settings of these students in their homes. Remember that the learning environment plays a vital role on the learning of the student. In a face-to-face -face class, we as teachers can actually easily assess the, we can easily manage rather the classroom because they have same lighting environment, ventilation, um, opportunities, say um, table, and other uh, factors on classroom management. But since in online or distance learning, different students have different settings. Now, ICT education is actually really encouraged because it has to be uh, really encouraged because it's very timely, especially in the 21st century education. But then again, it's also very, very challenging because, again, different students have different settings at their homes. And like, if it's face-to-face, -face, when they enter a classroom, they all have equal opportunities when it comes to lighting, ventilations, etc. And then lastly is goal-directed. Students use technology tools to set goals, plans, activities, monitor progress, and evaluate results rather than simply completing assignments without reflections. Again, in the 21st century education, we are not preparing our students to become employees, to become, uh, to apply to a, to, to a job, no? but allowing them to create their own jobs. And we want our students to utilize technology. Example, if you're planning to find a job in the real world right now, uh, you can actually go to different sites and apply for these uh, for, for a certain job that you're looking for, okay? And we want 
our, our students also to create their own jobs, to create their own companies if it's possible because we're entering what we call the gig economy. And ICT plays a vital role on this gig economy. And in education, 21st century education, we are not just wanting students uh, to comply with the requirements, but reflective and holistic learners. Okay, that's why if you're wondering why do we always have a reflection paper, reflection paper, reflection paper, because we want, as teachers, we want our students to be reflective, okay, to find value on the learning that they have. So these are the five uh, characteristics of learning environment, like act, uh, active, collaborative, constructive, authentic, and goal-directed, fused with the ICT matrix. Okay, there's actually a matrix. You can search it on the internet and then find the relationship of these five uh, characteristics of learning environments and the five uh, technology integration progressing levels. Okay. Okay, so now let's go to the evaluation of ICT resources. Remember that we are no longer the sole source of knowledge. We are facilitators of knowledge. Now, when ICT entered education, it has actually confused a lot because it offers a lot of information. So teacher must bear the skill of not only searching the information, but to make decision as to which knowledge you will take and use and which ones to put aside for a while. Because of the vast pool of knowledge that can only be that can be easily searched by the student. Say, for example, if the student, if you ask a student a certain definition of a certain word, they could easily search it on the internet and then the internet would sort it out and then give the most known definition of these words. But as teachers, we must learn how to sort this knowledge. The aim of 21st century education for teachers, one of these is to develop skills in evaluating internet resources. As teachers, we do not just want to search information and give it to the students, but we want to search informations okay, that are relevant for our students in teaching in, in helping us attain the teaching and learning objectives. We do not want our students to be just relying on the information that is present on the internet, but we want our students to get this information and sort these things out. Not just us teachers, but allow our, our, our learners to do that so, to develop those skills. But before those learners develop the skills on evaluating internet resources. As teachers, we must also learn how to evaluate these internet resources. Okay, so how to evaluate ICT resources. Number one is accuracy. The information that you should give to the learners must be reliable, free from error, and up to date. There are information that are actually correct, correct in a certain point of time, um, but there are also knowledge that are updated. Example, if you're teaching science, there are a lot of information that are now more updated than that in three decades ago, five decades ago. So it has to be up to date. Next is appropriateness. As I have mentioned a while ago, it ha you need to sort out which information should you give for now and put aside for a while because you cannot put a big junk chunk of information to a certain lower year level. You must give students, give learners an information that is appropriate to their grade level or year level or even to their age. You have to give them the information that they can grasp, not the information that you think that you can grasp, but that's not suitable for your students. Take note of that. Appropriateness in the year level, grade level, age level of the students is very important. Clarity, it must hit the instructional goals. Now, if you're searching for a certain definition and this word has a lot of definition, you should look for a definition that is fit to the instructional goals or fit to what is needed in the course that you're teaching. Completeness must, com must contain necessary information. Um, it must have a complete 
information pertaining or relevant to your course or to the subject that you're teaching. And then fifth is motivation. It has to be engaging, rewarding, and promotes active participation. Okay? Something that the students could actually relate. Um, of course, when the students enter a certain classroom, they have different information or knowledge based on their experiences. It is encouraged that we contextualize this information wherein all the students or most of the students, if possible, all of the students could actually relate to this. And then organization. Um, we do not give information in a big chunk and just give it to, our, uh, to, the, to the students. One of the skills that a teacher should have in the 21st century education is that we are knowledge uh, organizers. We are not just knowledge facilitators, we are knowledge organizers. We have to organize in a logical sequence the information that we want to give to our students. And remember in our discussion on curriculum development, we want this information to be seamless, to be uh, smooth, okay? As knowledge is being transferred, as knowledge is being uh, given to the student, it has to be smooth. Okay, so those are the ways, some of the ways on how to evaluate ICT resources. Uh, when citing, when, when you are checking the information, please, as much as possible, go to the initial reference. Okay, do not just base on the secondary reference. Go to the primary references. And of course, we also want that is something that is updated, something that is clear, and something that is relevant. Of course, all of us teachers have different specializations. If you specialize in language, in social sciences, in sciences, in mathematics, you are the one who's driving your, your, your ship. Okay? So you're the one who's aware, who's more knowledgeable on the information that is needed by your students. Okay, so why is it why do we push through with ICT education? Why do we use ICT? Because of the Education 4.0. Many says, what's Education 4.0? Education 4.0 is actually a response to the fourth wave of industrial revolution. So the following are trends that have huge potentials to transform the way we teach and learn, according to UNESCO 2018. So Education 4.0 is a response to the Industrial Revolution 4.0. Okay, so let's uh, check it one by one. Number one is open education resource. So open education resource is that there's a wide pool of information, a wide pool of, of uh, learning materials that is available on the internet, on, on hard copies and soft copies. Okay. Number two is that social networks. Um, of course, we have the different social media platforms that also influences the knowledge of the students. Like there are also fake news that rises. There are also news that are real. But because of these confusions of what is true and what is not, this actually influences the learners. But then again, there's also a good thing about this. This is if you promote uh, truth, in these social networks, this could actually easily be spread. But if you also promote negative or something that is fake, this could actually be easily spread as well. So it's a two-edged sword. Next is mobile technologies. Most of our students uh, are using mobile phones in their online classes because not all have the luxury of using of having their own laptops or computers. In the, in the online education, most of the students use mobile phones. And mobile technology also plays a vital role. That's why there's a lot of applications available in the App Store and uh, Play Stores that can be used for educational uh, purposes. Next is the Internet of Things. Now, the Internet of Things is, uh, it is a computing mechanics that becomes uh, a build in, built in into everyday things. So, example, we have smart TVs, we have different uh, technologies that are available in our houses. So it's actually it's actually uh, very helpful as well. So next is artificial intelligence. So AI, we have their Siri, Alexa, Bixby, Google Assistant. You know, these these are very relevant also because um, they make your life easier in searching things. Uh, but then again, 
do not rely too much on AI for now, <laughs> okay? Because there are still standard er- there are still errors that that they that these uh, AIs have, but they are very very inform very informative as well. Um, many are asking if these AIs are going to replace teachers. Cognitively, um, AIs have the power to replace teachers, um, but effectively and psychomotor, I don't think they, the, these um, AIs could actually entirely re- replace teachers. But, you know, the roles of teachers varies in different era. Like before, teachers are the sole source of knowledge. Now we are facilitators of knowledge. Who knows what might be the work of teachers? But definitely, the work of teacher will exist as long as there are kids to teach. Um, well, that's my personal opinion. Virtual and augmented reality. So we now use um, uh, VR. It's a simulation environment by a computer program that allows a person to visit and experience environmental uh, environment virtually. And also in AR, images from computing programs interrelate the actual views of the real world. So virtual reality is actually being used. Also, um, this is being used for laboratories, online laboratories already. So it has trans- transformed the physical laboratory activities to virtual laboratories. Okay? Like somehow these are the expected results in an experiment. Next is big data. Okay, this is somehow related to the Internet of Things. All the information is just out there. So, again, as teachers, we must sort out this information because there are billions of billions of inter uh, billions of billions of information that are present on, on on the on the internet. So, we must know how to sort these things out. And then coding. They say that in the uh, Education 4.0, they also say that coding is the language for teachers. So coding is the next level language for teachers, which is actually true. Um, Not just encoding grades, but of course, using softwares, using apps, uh, using websites as teachers, we must be ready for this. I'm quite nervous on, 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 on doing this, but yes, coding is very important. Ethics and privacy protection. Uh, there are a lot of rules when you are engaging in online education. We cannot ask easily for the information of our learners. We cannot do that, those things, because we have to protect our learners. And we also have to protect ourselves as teachers. And we also have to protect the information that we have. Okay. Then lastly is innovative future education. In the Education 4.0, we are not preparing our students again to become employees, but we are preparing our students to create their own jobs. If you take note about the curriculum, there are a lot of subjects that are present now that is not present before. There are a lot of works that are present now or jobs that are not present that are present now that do not exist before. A lot of subjects, a lot of courses, a lot of, a lot of jobs that are present now because the needs of the society today is different from the society that they had before. So the Education 4.0 is a response to the fourth industrial revolution. Okay, so these technologies that I've mentioned, will not, I will not entirely discuss them by, one by one, but I encourage you to be knowledgeable somehow about this. Okay, because this is very relevant in utilizing teaching and learning resources and ICT. So that's all for the 11th lesson that we're going to talk about. And I hope you learned a lot because I cannot, I cannot actually teach them one by one, but I can only give you an effective mode, an effective on, on, on how you're going to appreciate um, ICT, especially now during the time of pandemic, during the time where we are all forced to transfer our knowledge or transfer our mode of teaching and learning from face-to-face to uh, online class. Now, it's almost a year now, uh, but no, we're still trying to adjust. Okay? But I hope you're already able to adopt somehow. Um, and ICT, education, allowed education system or education sector to survive the pandemic. A lot of industries, a lot of, a lot of companies had closed, a lot of jobs, a lot of people lost their jobs. But because of ICT, 
uh, because of modern technology, education sector survives. But I hope we do not just survive this for now, but we use this to transform our education into more innovative education for the future. So that would be all for this episode. So I hope you learned a lot. Again, my name is JD. Should you have any questions, please feel free to chat or um, email me or comment at the comment section. So again, thank you everyone and God be with you. Happy New Year.